you know, excellent football team. Alabama obviously has an, an, uh, a great football team. As I said, they got great players uh, from top to bottom. Um, they guys aren't even on the field, can't get on the field. They'll probably start for most teams in the country. So we knew that coming in, knew we had to play a great game. Uh, just way too many mistakes early, in the, you know, early on for us. Uh, whether it missed tackles, poor fits defensively, uh, not setting an edge on the perimeter. Uh, you know, I, you, you know, it within a game plan, you got to try to stay balanced on, be able to win and take shots down the field. I think. You know, too many drop passes with some shots down the field. We had some opportunities to hit some and win some shots down the field and miss those early in the game. Um, but, you know, give them credit. They're an excellent football team, and, uh, you know, there's there's a reason they're number one in the country. And uh, uh, they played like it. We just got to move on and get ready for Arkansas. Questions? Dan, what do you tell the young team? With that type of game, that type of score, what do you tell them after the game? Yeah, you know, I mean, just sort of move on and go, go on to Arkansas at this point. You know, uh, the uh, there, there's things. I told them just be critical. Go watch themselves. Uh, evaluate some things on the film. And, and see some opportunities that were there that were missed for us uh, in the game. And, uh, you know, just, just realize you got to have the confidence to make those plays. And, and especially when you're playing a great team, uh, you got to execute at a very, very, very high level. You think it was Alabama's defense, or just just some big matches on y'all's offense for the mistakes on offense? Well, I, I think there's. Well, I mean, on, on I mean, we, you know, I think what do we have? Five drop passes in the first half. I mean, that's not good when you're playing a great defense. You know, I mean, it's, it's not good when you're playing a bad defense. But when you're playing a great defense, you can't do those things. What do you tell Nick? It seemed like every time he. He went back and passed. Got hit. How, how do you keep him up? And, and keep yeah, we got him in there. Well, they're a great team, so he knew that. He made some great throws during the course of the game, and I think he'll grow as a leader uh, in this game. You know, he's put in some tough situations, uh, made some great throws, missed a couple of throws too. But I think uh, uh, he'll learn from this uh, moving forward. You've seen a lot of good quarterbacks over your years coaching. Uh, just compare Jalen Hurts. What are your impressions? He's a solid him? player. You know, I mean, they do great things. They throw most of a lot of passes. Uh, you know, I got a lot of great playmakers from to kind of flip the ball to on different screens here and there. A lot of, a lot of screen pass, a lot of his stuff behind the line of scrimmage, and then he does a good job improvising. From a confidence standpoint, uh, after a game like this, you, you already mentioned Arkansas and Ole Miss coming up must win to get ball eligibility and things. What does a win like this do confidence wise for a team? Before? It doesn't do anything right now. We've been in this situation before, and not many guys have. I have. It was just. Three, three short years ago, we were in this situation, but very few guys in that locker room were actually on the roster then. Uh, where you get down to it, you get back to the wall, you got to go win two games and uh, to get to a bowl game. And so uh, that is that is what it is, you know. And so we've been here before, and we'll, we'll, we'll come back. And it's, uh, it really hasn't had much to do with this game. It has to do with how we're going to respond and come back this week. We talked about Fred Ross a lot. Broke another record today, I think, uh, most yards, receiving yards. When he signed with Mississippi State, did you think he could break all these records? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how anybody ever. You know, you guys always hear me on signing day. Uh, ask me in a couple of years, you know, how guys are going to be. Uh, but I, I, I'm pleased. You know what? Fred, to me, uh, is what our program's all about. He was a very talented guy, came here. Uh, I don't know if you're going to find a harder worker. Than Fred Ross. I mean, he comes and he constantly works every single day uh, at all of his, at, at, at to be the best he can be um, every day. And he's had he's had a heck of a career, you know, uh, here for us. And hopefully, he finishes a couple more games. You know, hopefully, he gets three more games to go finish and add to all of his records. But you know, it's a great example for the young guys. If you come here, you work your tail off. Great things are going to happen to you for your future. How does this Alabama team compare to the ones from the last few years? They're all really good, right? I mean, they, I mean, they, I mean like the, they're, they're, they have all five stars on their team. So they, they have basically uh, every top kid at every position in the last four years on their roster. So they've they're been pretty good the last couple of years, too. Coach, I know win or lose, you got to move on to the next one. But yeah. Are games like this harder or easier to move on? I, they're all the same to me. I mean, I'm going to go about the film great by the time we get back, right? Uh, Probably not going to be as happy tonight as I was last Saturday. And wake up tomorrow morning and figure out a way to go beat Arkansas. The same way last Sunday. When I woke up last Sunday morning, it was really nice to have won the day before. Had nothing to do with preparing for the next game. So 
uh, you know, for us, for our coaches, uh, you know, we get, we got to go find a way to beat Arkansas. What did you tell Weston Graves before he went out there and made the 48-yard field goal after missing? I said, you might, I mean, at that point, you know, I mean, I'm like, you want to try again? Uh, <laughs> I gave him a quote. I'll let him give you the quote. I don't know if I can publicly say it. Yeah. There's a movie, uh, Risky Business. Sometimes, you know, you got to say, <laughs> I told him. So you know what he told me? He ran off the field. He goes, you know what was in my head? Right before I, I, I tried that 48-yard field goal after I've missed a bunch, he looked and he said, you know, what the? I can't go on. It's amazing to get my football to his Twitter page probably brought up about what a great kicker he is right now. You know, he was, boy, he was awful early. and you know, I, you know, It's like everything. I was really smart football coach last week. I'm really dumb again this week. You know, Weston was a really the bad kicker in the first quarter, really good kicker in the third quarter. You're, you're as good as your last play. Uh, you know, uh, that was not a very good performance by us today. Um, but the great thing in the game of football, right? I mean, it, 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 it's the great thing in the game of football. We get to show up and get back to work and try to find a way to win the next one. How much did the, the, I guess, the field goal struggles affect you going on fourth down, or was that more of a scoreboard? No, that was, we're trying to, we're, most of our fourth downs, we were kind of on that edge, right. you know, and we were trying to, to keep going. You know, I mean, it, it, to be honest with you, the first field goal attempt, that's about pushing his limit and his range, and so was the second one, you know, and, and uh, that's about, you know, you get to that 30-yard line, you're going to 47-yard field goal, that's about push. I think he could hit a little bit beyond that, you know, if it was a game winner to try it for the win and, the, you know, the best chance to win. Um but we're always just trying to get in that range and, and make some plays. You gotta take some chances. They're good football teams. You gotta take some chances. What went into, I guess, bringing in Damian? Was it Nick getting so many hits? And nah, yeah, I mean, right, I mean, we weren't gonna win the game at that point in the game. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to make sure we got different guys on the field, guys to go play. Uh, you know, and Damian. Uh, I mean, he, he, he's one play away from being the guy. You know, and, and he knows that. So uh, the fact to come in, get some reps, go. Uh, Get himself ready for the, uh, you know, in case he, we need him next week, the next couple of weeks. As a quarterback, you know, type of coach, what, what's it do for a team when Nick st stands in there and gets hit every time? What, the, what does it do for his teammates when they're the way they kind of look at him? Tough I don't know. I think I think the team, I think the teams really appreciate, you know, really like there's a lot of guys, you know, guys are growing, guys are improving, uh, you know, and, and then guys can learn. I mean, look at I, I, I look at Fred and Donald. Uh, at the receivers, kind of some of our veteran players, even though, I mean, Donald's still the first-year starter for us, uh, and, and really had to be thrown into action, you know, because of other, other circumstances. But he, uh, you know, they, I don't think they had a great first half, but I think they showed a lot to the younger players of, you know what, hey, as Fred said, I mean, we're not going to stop throwing you the ball. So you just need to go catch it. Weston, we're not one. Everyone believes in you. I mean, you saw the team go congratulate them because they know what, these kids know what each other's go. They know what they go through. You know, I mean, a lot of people forget they're 19, 20 year old kids, and they get, I mean, whether it's your media, and you guys are pretty nice though, um, for the most part, but, um, you know, and social media, and everybody in the world is a journalist these days, right? Just like, I mean, anybody get a blog and go tweet something and write their op ed on what they think is going on, just like I'm sure everybody's a football coach and knows what they should call on third down. Uh, but these kids are young kids, and they go through that. So I think they appreciate that from each other. And, uh, you know, you look at Donald and Fred not have a great half and then come out, first drive, and snap both and make a catch after catch and jumping over people. You know, it shows the young guys, hey, you know, you got to go play the next play. Don't worry about what's happening. Don't worry about what people are thinking about. You go keep working. If you keep working, good things happen. And, uh, keep the right attitude and the right work ethic. And, and that happened there, you know, at, at times. And I think there's a lot of that to learn from, from with, with young players. How much did not having Logan today affect your ability to flip the field? I don't know. I mean, Cody was, yeah, you know, I mean, so that's a tough situation for him to be thrown into. Um, you know, I don't know. They won the punting game for sure. They're punters, and they get the best punter. 51-yard uh, average, so I don't, uh, we haven't been hitting them that far anyway this year, so that was a huge difference. When you look at a quarterback like Jalen Hurts, what's makes what's, what's so difficult to defend him and contain him? Well, because he, he can improvise. You know, they got so many weapons around him. Like, I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, he threw a lot of passes today, but most of them went about six inches. 
uh, you know, little flip screens and this, and they give it to guys that can score every play. I mean, had some nice throws down the field, but I think to me it's more his, you try to contain him, his, his ability to improvise out there on the field and scramble around and want to make plays. Uh, you know, I mean, he had their most carries today for them, so he's like kind of their quarterback, single wing quarterback, tailback, uh, everything. So, you know, when you go single wing, they got an extra blocker. They got one more blocker there in the box, you know, and then, uh, you know, the drop back game, he can scramble and improvise and make things happen. How close is Dale Williams to going, and what was the story? Uh, with Michael. Michael's still going to be out for the rest of the year. Um, we decided to go ahead and do a, a knee surgery with him. It just, it just wasn't to the point where he'd be able to perform. Uh, Daryl, maybe we'll get him back. You know, with those things, uh, there's a lot of injuries. You kind of have a pretty set schedule, and you know what it is. Anytime you're dealing with a neck spinal injury, there's no, you know, ankle sprain. You're usually this is pretty the standard procedure. Uh, but with spinal injury, it's not that way. So uh, maybe he'll be back this week. Is it ACL for story? No, no, no. Just uh, I think it was a meniscus. It just had, had to be, you know, uh, meniscus bone bruise. They just had to go clean it up. But it just kept swelling on him, and he wasn't going to be able to perform. So we'll get it back for the off season. You know, was our thought of you know just having him back for the off season. Left or right knee? Right. I don't know. Okay. Right. I saw Lane kind of run down and catch yeah, it, fly down. I've known Lane for a while. Yeah, what was the conversation like? No, that? just, you know, I mean, just I've known Lane um, for a while. Just say, you know, good job, just talk some ball. And, you know, uh, I, I, I got a lot of respect for Lane. I, I you know, uh, when he was, I, I got to know him when he was head coach of Tennessee uh, a little bit, spent time with, with him and his, uh, and his family. And, and uh, uh, like Lane, I think he's an excellent football coach, does a great job. And um, so we just know each other for a while. Thank you.